My name is Wolfman. Uh, some people know me by Zio. I am a Brooklyn, New York hip hop artist, MC, also clothing designer, uh, been a professional dancer for 20 plus years. I am also an event MC. So I guess like, you know, Renaissance man, entrepreneur, whatever you want to call it. I am a person that wears a few different hats, but uh, when I wear each hat, I make sure to keep it on long enough to learn the game, learn the knowledge I need to know, and then move forward. Hey, it's Kellen, and today on Diversified Game, you guys know when we go into entertainment, man, I'm going to try to keep this so you guys can just get it, run with it, lessons learned from Wolfman. He's going to give us the game on how he has taken, you know, his passions and put it all together in entertainment because he can rap, he can dance, he can event MC, he can bless the mic in many ways and keep your party and events going. But at the end of the day, behind all that, you know, it's all about business to get to those next levels. So Wolfman, welcome to the show. How are you doing today? Thank you for having me, brother. I'm glad to be here. Uh, I'm enjoying it from beautiful West Palm Beach, Florida. Uh, I'm two weeks out. You know, I've been here for about two weeks. My fiance and I are having our first baby and she's due any minute now, literally any day now. So uh, God forbid it's happening right now while I'm outside. But um, <laughs> yeah, so I am excited for that i'm nervous for it but i'm determined i'm confident you know this is a step in my life that i've always wanted to take um i think that i've always been a fan of you know children and working with them i've worked with children for about six years um at a day camp after school center and then on and off over the years just through different things and i've mentored uh through dance and taught classes and things like that so I'll give you a little backstory going into that. <clears throat> so I started dancing at around like 14 years old, self-taught street dance. I started with, you know, popping, locking, b-boying a little bit. And then around, I think 2005, I got introduced to crump dancing through Rise. Um, if anybody knows that movie, if you don't check it out, R-I-Z-E, it's uh, directed by David LaChapelle. And basically it is the backstory of the crump dance and clowning movement in LA specifically like the Watts and Compton area during the riots and what was going on and this kind of uh, dance form that spawned out of that. So it spawned out of this kind of like oppression and depression and it turned into this like now it is considered a worldwide phenomenon and Crump is actually still building. So um, I saw that movie and I can honestly say like that was one huge change in my life where the day I saw that movie, like I went home and when people were still doing CDs, I went home and burned a CD with all the music on it. And me and my friends were just outside and we were crumping for days. And that has taken me to so many places, embracing that dance specifically. And I feel like that dance and that time kind of spawned, every, it, it opened up every creative door that I needed it to. So whenever I wanted to do something, I had already built up the relationships and the confidence and the you know just the creative mindset that i needed to push everything forward so i was professionally dancing like almost a year after like we started training up really and i got my first professional gig at like 14 and you know it was like like a community garden but we got paid like 20 bucks me and two other my friends and that was really like oh man you know this is a thing so I just kind of kept going with it. You know, I've worked with Reebok. I've worked in a, I've done a couple of music videos. I've done some background work in movies. And when you look at it, and I think for me, the, the conversation is always like, there's a middle ground between superstardom and the bottom that a lot of people don't really understand and appreciate of how to climb through those ranks. And I think for me, like, I want to stress it to the, the next generation that, like, you have to really love the process every step of the way, because it's going to go down for sure. It's going to go up like you can go three notches up, but then six notches down. But you have to understand that, you know, life is just like the stock market. It's like anything. There's waves. You know, it's not linear. Time is not linear. It, it moves in waves, you know. So when it's like when they say it to your time, I think that 
the most important thing is understanding that like you're present, being present and being aware that every, all time is your time. And when you realize that you're able to mold the environment around you to like uh, benefit you. So, and again, that's through the relationships and things like that. So from dancing for 10 plus years, I was able to make all these relationships so that when I decided, I was like, you know what? I want to take music seriously. It was like, I kind of reclused. I was just writing every single day. I was writing, I was writing. I wasn't really telling anybody. I was still able to dance and then, you know, release my first song and people were like, oh, this is good. And then it was like, from there, now you see me on stages. I found my way into like performing and, you know, figuring out anywhere I could perform, whether it was an open mic. So it's also, you have to be confident in what you do. Like you have to really, when they say you have to want it, like you have to want to put yourself in front of people, even going into rooms and having conversations and shaking a person's hand could change your life because you don't know whose hand you're shaking. You don't know um, what, what uh, network they have for you but you have to present yourself in a way where the person goes, this is someone I will. Hi everyone. Have you ever been curious about visiting Africa? Which African country were you interested in? Kenya, Nigeria, Uganda, South Africa, Ethiopia. Which country are you interested in? My good friend, Kellen Cash Coleman, came up with a course called My First Trip to Africa that'll guide you through this process. It's only $20, and in this course, you'll learn about passports, visas, vaccinations that you need before you go there, as well as a budget, uh, how much the trip is gonna cost. He also talks about what you should pack, uh, what you should take with you, how you should travel on a budget. Did you know that 100 US dollars is worth 1,000 South African rand and over 10,000 Kenyan shillings? So imagine what you can do with $100 back home. I say back home because I'm from Sudan, I'm African, I already know how it's like. I know that you know when you convert Canadian and American money, it goes a long way when you're traveling across Africa. So if you're curious, um, if, if Africa is a place that you've always wanted to go, always wanted to move there, Kellen Cash is the person to ask. Check out the course, there's a little preview you can listen to. Um, before you actually purchase it. If you're interested in this course, visit www.diversifiedgame.com. Don't miss out. Oh, you know, you talk about the kids and music, and can you talk about how, you know, somebody who wants to be a professional entertainer, mm -hmm. how do you make that work? Because you say your first gig, you know, you get $20, okay, at 14, 15, cool. But now you're about to have what I believe is your first child. And right. it's like, it's getting real. You got your, you know, your, your, your wife who he was out there. I met him at a networking event for the <laughs> uh, West Palm Beach Black Chamber, y'all. This is why you got a network because you never know who will show mm -hmm. up for the young professionals. And I might have been too old to be there, but I blended in. I wasn't the old, <laughs> oldest one up in there. Nah, you know, you I saw some man. other gray hairs and wrinkles, in, you know, up in there. <laughs> <laughs> but uh but let, let let the people know like how do you make that work because okay you get the 20 and then you get the 200 and then you get to 2000 but entertainment is like it's never guaranteed and they can renege at any time so yes. mentally and financially how do you put that together um i think what it is is mentally you have to understand that it's a journey first and foremost like if you're going to do anything whether it's school you know, no matter what it is, it's a journey and it's going to go down. And again, it's going to go up. It's in waves. So I think that what I understood early on is like not every gig is going to be twenty dollars. Not every gig is going to be two hundred dollars. Not every gig is going to be two thousand. Like, And you have to understand that not every opportunity is going to be the big one. You know, I've been in rooms where there was like legitimately no people in the crowd. There was just whoever was working the event. Um, I've been in rooms where there was one person, two people. Then I've been in rooms where there was 200 people. I've been in, you know, on stages where there was 2000 people, you know, so it comes to a point, uh, where you have to understand that there is, there's definitely like a thick skin that you're going to need to develop to understand like, Hey, that's, that's just what it is. If there's nobody in the crowd, there's nobody in the crowd. I just got to work harder next time. And when you understand that, you control 
when you can get the certain payouts because e and even when you're still climbing it's not always going to be the big gigs until you build that team but to build that team they have to see that you're willing to work that hard because why should someone you know introduce their network to you if you're just like oh i deserve this because i'm a great rapper or i'm a great artist or i'm a great creative nowadays that don't work talent doesn't pay bills it's like talent and consistency so they have to see that you're out there like which is why most companies it seems like all these creators they already have their uh, audience and they bring their audience to the brands and say hey i've got ten thousand people that um i can influence with your product so you should pay me you know and you know jump on board with what i'm doing so now now it's very much different where you as the singular person can be the brand that other brands come to so i think it's that is building is understanding that you're the brand no matter where you go that's in person that's out of person. like you are a brand so the way you carry yourself the way you speak is very important man and speaking is a big thing can you tell people just even education wise you know what you've done because when people now you know in florida it's interesting because people think rap and i talk to everybody and they're like mm -hmm. well, yeah i like kodak black and i'm like you like kodak black with i'm like you like kodak black and you know these are suburban um mm -hmm. all colors all races and, and always my thing, I know Kodak does this thing behind the scenes with different nonprofits, but when Kodak Black talk, he it's like, you could be a speaker if you had some media training, right? Right. But because you want to be in this hood bubble, right. um, that's that might be cool at 18, 19, 20, but now you're a grown man, I need you to have grown man conversations, you know what I'm saying? Right. Uh, and I need you to be able to talk in all crowds. So tell people like even education wise, you know, what you think is college for someone who wants to be an entertainer? Is it even necessary or should they focus on the arts? Um, I think it's both you. Now we have education that can benefit you in the arts. So to me, I would say this, if you want to get into the arts, the first thing you should do is learn business, learn marketing, learn promotion, like learn those things, learn graphic designing, like pick up the skills that are the most sought after things in this industry because business, marketing, you know, branding, those things are at the forefront of the creative process now because if you can't brand yourself and you can't market yourself, you're not going to go anywhere. If you don't understand the business, people are going to take advantage of you. So it's both. Um, but speaking is definitely. Um, so here's the thing with speaking. I think that it, it's also both people like Kodak Black because he's authentically Kodak Black. They know that every time they speak to him, they're going to get Kodak Black. Sometimes people don't like the media training because it's like, oh, um, I can't say this. I can't say that people don't really like to be censored and they don't like to uh, feel like someone is playing them, which is why politicians don't go, don't always go over well with people. Cause they're like, I don't know. Like, I feel like you're hiding something, but with Kodak black, he's just like, I'm Kodak. So people are like, Oh, well, we know what we're going to get. So we're going to go with Kodak black every time we're going to go with future. Every time we're going to go with the, these artists because they know what they're going to get in terms of how they speak. Cause that's just who they are that's their whole brand. So it's like, would you rather go with somebody who's media trained, who is gonna like, kind of, you know, people are like distrustful because they're like, mm, this is not how you really are. Or would you go with Kodak Black, who, you know, if you see him at a concert or if you see him at home, he's, he's talking like Kodak Black, like that's just him. We know what we're gonna get. And then what we can do is the people around him, we can be like, hey, listen, just make sure Kodak Black is on time. Make sure he does this, it's this kind of event. And I'm sure like, you know, to that level, he can be like, oh, okay, cool. Well, I'm, I'm going to speak like me, but maybe I'll tone it down. Maybe I'll watch what I do. Like I won't, you know, do these things around the people. So it's a lot of both. Like it is important to have, well, education first and foremost is important to have, you know, that's important. Um, just because if you educate yourself, you are already 10 steps ahead of the people that don't. And, you know, for me, I didn't finish college, but I made sure that I educated myself in the areas that I needed to 
to get to a certain, you know, to get to the certain places so that I could open up the time to educate myself more. Now, I love it. And, and let me just be very clear for y'all listening, not picking on Kodak Black, because I could name a slew of artists with master degrees who play that dumb, dumb game and yep. people that, you know, I know. And I'm like, that's not even how you talk, man. That, <laughs> like You've made up this character. Or you've taken someone else's character. And, you know, that media training, something that, you know, we, we do and we've done is like you don't have to be. Uh, Shakespeare to come clear, but people, you know, I know for a fact, if you did a master's program, Plies, you can talk uh, the Queen's English because you had to defend your paper. And so when you only give people that and you cross tried and and Snoop Dogg used to be shy and he used to be a terrible speaker. And now we look at Snoop and that's how, you know, come out of that shell because that you got to be inspiring to the people. You just Mm -hmm. can't be, I'm in the hood. You ain't in the hood anymore. And you got to show other people how to get out there. So that's what conversations like this, real talk, real spit. You far removed from it. I think that's another important thing is understanding that the people that you look up to us are far removed from these situations like they make you think that they aren't like you know they might tap into the hood every once in a while but when you like future not hanging out in the hood right and if he is there's tons of security on him because he's worth too much he's worth more to the people around him alive than he is you know unalive so they're going to protect that investment like you become a brand you become an investment to where people will protect you and that's physically that it you know maybe not necessarily mentally and emotionally because there's a certain level they might need you to be in order for you to make that money and that's another deeper conversation but you know when you become a brand there's certain levels of protection that you can you know put around you there's certain levels of walls that you can kind of build up real real talk and so you know with the the music business and you're now here in florida you also do graphic design um are you a full-time entrepreneur or you know working with the kids actually let me re- rewind that because i mm-hmm. want to go somewhere with that you said you were working with the kids and before the interview you were like trying to you know put that together let me give some game real quick anybody working with kids the money is the kids so what you really yeah. want to do is become the business. And when I found that out after working in group homes and psych mm-hmm. boards and being a supervisor and CPS, the money's the kids. So if you can be your own business and go do the same thing that you do, I always say it's monetize your life, be your yeah. own boss, something you can yeah. give to your children. That's the thing. But have you had to dance between dance? Um, that's a play on words, right? <laughs> um course. Yeah. Have you had to dance and kind of, you know, work and do music and all oh, yeah. that? Um, so I actually have a uh, there's there's been several times in, you know, the reason I started working with kids uh, necessarily was because I needed a job that I could have funds for, you know, just kind of day to day funds and things that I you know, to support the career and like get the little bit of equipment that I needed or get to the places that I needed. Cause I was like, man, you know, I need to get out, you know, I need to, to, to make my way around. So I needed something that was flexible, um, not a lot, you know, not time consuming. And I found this gig. Originally I was hired as a dance instructor, but uh, when once I spoke to this, the supervisor and it was actually like a day camp that I had went to as a kid. So, um, in me speaking to them, you know, they made me a counselor and I kind of was just like that it just flourished. You know, I worked with them for about six or seven years. I think I was off like one year, but I gave them like six or seven years, went all the way up to supervisor. I was in my own uh, program with them where I was able to like mentor kids that were going into high school or their uh, second their second years of high school. And the whole time I was juggling, you know, these different things. I was able to like kind of build up a small base of customers at the camp with the, with the clothing line. Um, And even doing the music, like uh, there's one specific time where I was, um, I was working and I think it was a like Sunday night was kind of like the biggest, one of the biggest moments of my career where, you know, it was 2016 
and I had won the Hot 97 Who's Next contest. And, you know, it was like this, this big thing. Um, and I remember like posting the video on Facebook and like all these people are sharing it. So I go to work the next day and my coworkers are like, didn't you just get famous last night? Like, what you doing here? And I was like, it, it don't work like that, you know? But it was interesting to have that dynamic where like you are kind of like at the height of, you know, what you are doing and you're seeing this level that you haven't seen. And then the next day it's like, you are still a part of reality, your reality, which is like, you know, hey, I got to do what I got to do. You know what I mean? Until something really kicks off, this is what I'm doing, you know, but to the, the average person who is not the creative and who doesn't see that, they don't understand what it means because they're, they see like, oh, well, you did something big. You're not supposed to be here. They think that's how it works. And it's like, it, well, it, it doesn't, you know, you still carry yourself through life. And when it happens, it happens for you. So are you saying because they don't care and they try to take us down, we got to take care of me and mine on this Negro Niar just to get the <laughs> blackberries? For y'all don't feel know, me? go to his, go to his <laughs> website and I just talk, I just threw all his singles in there you feel just me? like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's and, the and human for, nature. That's the human yeah. nature. You feel me? Yeah. And, and all those titles, you guys, all those titles are most of them. You can see, you know, videos on YouTube where it's a lyric video, but you've really taken your time. You've given that New York flair. So I know now that you're in Florida, you know, if you go the typical route, we'll see you on jet skis. Um, hopefully you won't be like spot them, got them and get arrested on the jet ski. Oh, no, nah, nah. police. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, but, <laughs> but Florida is the new home. So how are you like tapping into the local artists? Um, I honestly, I haven't even gotten a chance to. I think that in the next couple of months, my goal really is to just kind of uh, cultivate my family, you know, with my partner, my daughter and seeing how, you know, we can create what we can create for <clears throat> our family, just, <clears throat> excuse me, just kind of building up like what we want our lifestyle to be. So it's not that it, you're, it takes a pause. It's like, I, I won't know what the, the environment is to tap into because I'll be involved in the family. And I think that, you know, at some point you have to kind of disconnect. Like, I feel like for me, you know, you need to disconnect from just being the the workaholic and the entrepreneur and be like you know what I want to cultivate my family I want to like make sure we're good because the the skill doesn't leave you know <clears throat> and um I think more so I've been watching a lot of uh artists that I grew up with you know I was watching an interview with Method Man the other day and just hearing some of the things that they've gone through and like the things that you kind of felt on your journey, it's like, well, we have the same mindset, you know, um, Method Man just had his break early on, but now with the way the internet works, you could put up something tomorrow and it could change your life, but it's a consistency. So for me, it's going to be, you know, when I can find the time to do my creative side, I put some things together and make sure that, you know, I just kind of like time management is going to be like my new ally. So it's going to be, okay, I can make the time to do these things, build what I got to build, you know, put some time into my company, put some time into the artistry and then, you know, uh, back to, you know, building the family and just kind of like living life, you know, and then when, um, when I'm able to, you know, put those, those pedals forward, it's just like, and tapping into the community and understanding who's around me, what the network is. So I think that the, I think that there's a level of artistry that you can create on the middle ground, on the independent round, like the independent artist is such a blanket term for different types of people. Like that means I started out independently with my own money. There's I'm independent and I build up this huge fan base that I don't need to sign to a label. I'm independent and I have a family and my artistry provides me with enough to like pay the bills. So there's all these different things that you can build in the, the ecosystem of like what independence is and as an entrepreneur. So, um, yeah. 
I want to push, you know, you're independent, but you know, your management, Ed, the manager, shout out to him. He's yeah. at Atlantic records and Electra. Um, so it sounds like if you wanted a deal, you know, where yeah. you could get one, if you wanted a high interest uh, loan. <laughs> well, interestingly enough, he, so that's actually a fairly new position. So for, and he just got hired this year, actually. So for the entirety, like we started in what, maybe 2014 and you know, everything has been self-sufficient out of pocket, you know, like Ed is someone I actually met working with the children. So our, our, like our community is really like, yo, this, this is not just somebody I was like, yo, you my manager and you got the connects. We've built, like he was able to work at Atlantic with the work that we did over the years. So we kind of created an a, a network for each other where we were able to kind of put ourselves in places to do that. Like, you know, he, he went back to school um, because he was like, yo, you know, I want to, I want to get you guys to the next level. So I'm going to, you know, take some time, you know, do the research I got to do and boom, you know, a position opened up and he was able to get hired. So we don't know what that's going to look like for us. We don't know if that means he's going to be able to sign us or whatever, but for us, we're just like, yo, we want to make sure that we stay in control of our creativity and what we've got going on, because what we've got going on, it worked. It was working. We put out music ourselves. We toured ourselves. We went to festivals ourselves. Like everything was out of pocket, you know, so it's not, you know, a, it's not a machine. And I think from the outside, when you look at it, if you go down the road, people are like, yo, man, y'all are doing your thing, not realizing that it takes a lot to just do your thing. You know, people don't understand how much it takes to be doing your thing. And from the outside, it may look like, yeah, man, you know, you got your podcast, things are going well, but they don't see that when you turn it off, you know what I'm saying? Like, I got to keep the lights on, you know, I, I still got to, you know, golf down some, some ramen noodles from time to time, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it is, uh, a, a, it's always a journey, you know what I mean? So even with people being in positions that seem like they could, you know, put you in the right place, there's still a lot of work to do before that door opens up, you know what I mean? So, you know, I'm, I'm grateful that he was able to get that position, but I think the conversation that we've had with the unit was like, yo, we, st we still got work to do. Like, this, this doesn't change anything. This doesn't change the amount of work that we have to put in anyway. So I think that's another thing that people forget is like the record label isn't going to save your life. You know, <laughs> it's, it's not a lifesaver. It's a, it's a lifeline. And that lifeline could snap at any moment because you're an investment. So if you don't raise their stock up, you owe, you know, you owe and I think that's something that we never wanted to do. Like, we don't want to owe people for how we move. No, real, real talk. That's real talk. You know, I, I always picture this. Um, if you guys remember the movie Rounders uh, with Matt Damon, if mm. you start off with a little bit at the card table <clears throat> and you happen to whoop everybody and you got all the mm -hmm. chips, that's what kind of like this, this life is. And you're like, wait, I didn't even know. I was just playing the game. I was mm -hmm. just doing what I was supposed to do. Now I got all the chips and now it's poker. So I know what can I do? And can I walk away from the table or can I put some earnings aside? And right. that's where, you know, you got to have good management. You got to have a good team and you got to have a good mind and heart. So you don't go buy a business. bunch of things. Mm -hmm. And that's tell the most the, important part. Tell the people, because you're in tune, what is a community give back that you are doing or that you would like to do in the future? Well, so I've been um, in the, in I mean, in the years, you know, I'm always open to performing at community events, um, you know, just opening that up. I've, I've definitely wanted to get into doing, you know, workshops or just like just speaking you know, more at like possibly high schools or, um, you know, things like that. In the future, I definitely want to be open up to, I want to be able to like go into schools and, and do like workshops and have mentor programs just to kind of build up, you know, that next generation and give them the tools and the, the, the spaces to like create and, you know, do the things that they want to do because it's going to become a lot more accessible and free to be a creative it's not going to be this like 
oh, I can't do it. It's not going to make any money. Like we're getting to a place where all these things are going to be like, they're already household items. You know, from 10 years ago, you weren't able to buy the equipment that you can buy now and start a podcast from your home or start a, you know, build a music studio in your bedroom. 10 years ago, that was very different. So I think that in the next 10 years and 20 years, what I'm trying to do is understand like where things are going to be at you know, with, especially with the coming of the metaverse and NFTs and, and the different things that are going to be offered to this next generation is getting on the forefront of it. And like, how can we empower them with these things and not distract them, not just, we're going to feed them all this, like, you know, smoke and mirrors. So how can we like create something or how can I, you know, create something that's going to like, it's, it's going to entertain them, but it's going to like educate them. And I think that, um, you know, I'm, and it's just on the groundworks of learning. Like I'm still just learning and understanding the eco space and I still have to kind of create my own network for those things to happen. But that is definitely something I'd like to do in the, in the future. And you said one of the key words is almost like I need a ding, ding, ding. He said metaverse NFT. Some of y'all have asked me about that picture that we got from, you know, South Africa by a Cameroonian artist. You want to send me 50,000? I got a utility behind it. Uh, I'll tell you all mm -hmm. about it. But you can, you, can you can have that for about 50. Um, and the price is only going to go up. So I'm only going to add more and more. What you get with buying that? Woo, you get access to Africa that you've never seen. Um, so yeah, but this is good game. And I want you to tell the people where they can find you because I want them to have to tune in. I want them to subscribe to your mm -hmm. YouTube, to all your social media. And then those people locally, you know, I want them to also see this like the Kitty Londons, who that's a name that you got to know, especially when you're talking about hosting because she does so many events. Very nice lady. and. Um, you know, I think you guys would definitely get along, but she's also an artist as well. She does mm -hmm. a lot, a lot of hats, but let them know where they can find you before we sign off. Yeah. All social media is the Wolfman, T-H-E-W-X-L-F-M-A-N, uh, wolfman.com. You can find my clothing line, false claim C-O, all social media, false claim code.com. Check out the shop. I got a bunch of new stuff dropping soon. Um, you know, while I'm here, that's going to be the bulk of my focus is just building that brand up, um, get everybody outfitted and suited up. Uh, yeah, YouTube Wolfman Official, or you can just Google me. You Google Wolfman, W X L F M A N. I'm sure to come up. I am the real Wolfman. I should be the only Wolfman. So anybody else you see with the name, that ain't it, Chief. It's me. <laughs> and of course, whether you are listening, watching, or hearing this, even in Freetown, Sierra Leone at AYV Radio, uh, you can check out the links in the description and check that out. Let me know if you have any issues. Check the comments, make the comments wherever it is. Make sure no matter what you do, make sure you share this game with somebody else. It will change their life. Be blessed. For sure. Y Are you tired of the violence, tired of the injustice, police brutality, rampant discrimination, lack of gun control in this failed by a socioeconomic experiment called America? Or maybe you need a break from the relentless grind and want to regain control of your destiny, your wealth, your health, and your purpose. Diversifiedgang.com has the right course for you. Prepare for my first trip to Africa. Looking to reconnect with your roots, start a new business, or just a fresh start. Africa, AKA the motherland is waiting. Don't let the Chinese and the Mazungus have the fun and also take over the motherland. From Cairo to Mombasa, from Dakar to Cape Town, Africa has something for everyone from business opportunities to the most amazing people, safety, leisure, and landscapes. So opportunities abound. It is time for the diaspora to reconnect with their roots. Time to reconnect with the birthplace of humanity. Africa is the last frontier. Get your head in the game and reclaim your legacy. The writing is on the wall. Babylon is falling. Give up the stress, grind, and violence inflicted on our people on this continent and prepare for a journey of restoration and joy by connecting with the land of your ancestors. Check out our new course and kick off your adventure at diversifiedgame.com.